Wall Street is closing the successful week on a positive note. Quarterly reports will be the catalyst for market sentiment before the Fed's policy meeting, and the results available inspire optimism among stock investors following a beat results of a Pepsi, large American banks are also expected to unveil positive reports. All in all, the underlying reason for optimism on Wall Street is disinflation signs and the optimistic opening of the corporate season. So the benchmark stock index is closed in the green. The Dow Jones looked a modest growth of 0.14%. The Nasdaq showed the best performance, closing 1.58% up. The S&P 500 uh, gained 0.85% to close at 4,510 uh, points. The indexes uh, traded quietly in the New York pre-market, following reports of large U.S. banks. The indexes went up. The S&P 500 is expected to trade in the interdecade between 4,480 and 4,540 points. The major stock indexes extended their growth yesterday amid disinflation optimism triggered by the fresh data on the U.S. producer prices. The report showed that the annual increase in the U.S. factory inflation was the lowest in almost three years. All in all, the data released this week has almost completely convinced investors that the Fed is ready to terminate its tightening cycle. In this context, technology-related stocks provided the most support for the S&P 500. Other leaders of the day included Alphabet stock, which jumped by 4.7%. The search came on the news that um, Google is launching its artificial intelligence chatbot, uh, brought in Europe and Brazil, is in concerns about regulatory issues overseas. As a result, the index is uh, hitting new highs over 2023. The S&P is up more than 17% for the year, and the Nasdaq is up more than 40%. Futures for the U.S. stock indexes were muted on a Friday before the release of a quarterly reports of large banks, but after that, they returned to the confident bullish dynamics. JP Morgan reported a 67% rise in the second quarter earnings on Friday, as it earned more from interest payments on loans and benefited from the, its purchase of a First Republic Bank. Shares in America's largest lender rose by 2.4% in the pre-market trading. CEO Jamie Dimon reassured investors that the economy remains on a sound footing. Wells Fargo's earnings zoomed up by 57% in the second quarter as the company boosted customer interest income and raised its full-year net interest income forecast, sending shares up by nearly 4% in a pre-market trading. Citigroup's profit shrank by 36% in the second quarter. Another major bank, BlackRock, will report later in the evening. In addition to banks and the financial sector of the S&P, the medical sector was also doing quite well. Market sentiment improved by the positive report of United Health, which raised the company's shares by 4% in the entire segment. Among individual stocks, Microsoft added 1.5% after UPS changed its recommendation on the stock to buy. Overall, the S&P earnings are expected to decline by 6.4% year-on-year in the reporting season, with the revenue down a more modest 0.8% and overall financials up 5.4%. While the full picture will be revealed in the coming weeks, the dominant sentiment in the market continues to be a long-awaited drop in the U.S. headline inflation, below 3%. On Thursday, the Nasdaq and the S&P ended their last two sessions at one-year highs. The Nasdaq is set for the best week since mid-March. 
after the opening bell, market sentiment may be affected by the results of a preliminary survey by the University of Michigan, which is expected to show an improvement in the consumer sentiment in July. The currency market is more welcoming to the US dollar today. Its index rebounded intraday, having inched up by 0.15%. The index is a trading at about 99.9 within the corridor between 99.60 and 101.20. Disinflation optimism as well as the face in the strong US economy and a softer landing pushed the US dollar down to a 15 months low on a Friday. The the index is on a track to close the week with the steepest weekly loss since November. And the instrument slumped to 99.57 yesterday and uh, it's expected to lose 2.4% this week. On the back of the soft US dollar, the euro reached a new 16 months high at 1.1243 in Asian hours after which it fell to 1.1227. Markets are still pricing in a 95% chance of a 25 basis point Fed rate hike later this month, but not more until the year end. At the same time, Fed officials remain cautious. Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller said he is not ready to announce full clarity of US inflation and advocates for further rate hikes this year. The Canadian dollar loosened its grip after a few days of rally, having climbed by 0.17%. The USD card pay is now trading at 1.3136 inside the intraday corridor between 1.3110 and 1.3160. After confident growth on Wednesday and Thursday, the loonie is making a minor downward correction. Brent crude slipped from the level of 81 in the pre-market um, and Brent crude futures sank by 0.8% and WTI futures fell by 0.4% to $80.73 and $76.53 respectively. Both benchmark rates rose for three sessions in a row, fueled by the news that some oil fields in Libya were closed due to a local social clashes uh, triggered by the uh, kidnapping of the former minister. Further support for prices came from yesterday's reports by the International Energy Agency and OPEC. They suggested oil demand would pick up in the second half of the year, especially in China, despite broader macroeconomic headwinds. The crypto market is pulling back from the test of the one-year highs. Bitcoin briefly touched $31,804, the highest price since June 2022. The token has been surged by 90% since the beginning of the year and by 30% in the last months. The flagship crypto dipped to 31,000 in the pre-market. Popular altcoins are trading mixed. Ethereum gained 0.3%. Solana and Litecoin jumped by 3.7%. Ripple retraced by 4.5% after an amazing rally of 73%. The rise of the cryptocurrency market was encouraged by judges ruling that Ripple Labs did not violate securities law by selling its XRP tokens on a public exchanges. This decision was a significant legal victory for the cryptocurrency industry in its confrontation with the Securities and Exchange Commission. While the decision depends on the details of the case, the fact that XRP tokens traded on a public crypto exchanges are not le uh, legally securities is likely to set a precedent. The decision has already caused rally in altcoins, Solana, Matic uh, and Stellar have surged by 15 and 50 percent. Let's discuss Bitcoin's intraday outlook. If the price settles at 31,200, it will be able to retest 31,800 and $32,000. Alternatively, the token might decline to $30,500 and $30,200. Thank you for watching. We are closely monitor the markets and provide you with the up-to-date financial information and analysis. 
We are waiting for your questions and comments. Subscribe to our channel and see you online on Monday.